Hello, I'm Jose with Free Sky North America. And today's video is a continuation of the trainer series. And if you need to learn how to do a basic trainer setup, I did cover that in the previous video. This video is going to cover just one thing, which is rates. One thing that would be nice is to have a separate set of rates for your instructor and separate set of rates for your student. And that's what I had set up. So the way that this works is when you go into student mode, Students plane. then these rates take into effect. When you go into instructor mode, Instructors plane. these rates come into effect. So you can have your own rates. You can say, for example, set your rates to high and set your student to low. So we're going to go ahead and do a setup doing that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to differentiate when we are in student mode and instructor mode. And the way you do that is with your trainer switch. So what I want is for these rates to be only active Students plane. when I am in that mode. So when this switch is in that position, then these rates become active. And when this switch is Instructors in plane. that position, then these rates become active. We're going to go ahead and set that up in logical switches. I'm going to go over to model and go to logic switches. Nothing here yet. This is a brand new model template. The only thing I did was add the sound effect for this switch. So let's go ahead and add a new one. I'm going to hit there. And the name of this one, let's call it STU for student. And let's call this low rate. Oops. The function that we want is we want it when this switch is hit and this switch is hit. So we want this to be an AND switch, A-N-D. First value is going to be the trainer switch in the student mode, Students plane. which happens to be SH down. So when SH down, this is a momentary switch. I got to hold it in that position since it's a momentary. Then I get out of the menu and I confirm that it's bold right now. And when I release it, plane. it is unbolded. Then value two is going to be this switch in the low position. And I'm going to say that low position is SD up. I know some people like it the other way around, but that's just preference. So SH down and SD up is when this logical switch will turn on. So if you take a look right now, that red light or that LS1 in red means that that switch isn't on. So I can flip the switch all day long. It will not turn it on. It will only turn it on when I have Students playing. student mode with the switch and this switch in the up position, and there it is. Instructors playing. So I created this one, so you might as well use it to make the other switches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over here and clone. So it's exactly the same right now on LS2. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. And then now I'm just gonna change this over to mid-rate. M-I-D, so student mid-rate. Same thing down here, SH down is correct. This one, we just got to change this to SD in the middle position. I can get out of that. Now I can just make my high rate, which is by cloning. Clone, edit, change this to be enter or page, which is delete when you're in text edit mode and make this high. So student high rate will be this in the down position. So now I created a difference between this switch and this switch. So um, this switch over here is just gonna be the instructor one, which is SA. And then this one over here is gonna be SD, but you gotta be in the student mode by the SH switch being pressed in a down position. So that's it for the logical switch programming. Now I'm gonna go back into mixes and we'll go, we're gonna go ahead and set rates. So I'm just going to work with ailerons over here, edit. And the first thing we're, I'm going to do is rates. So the order is important. Is So the first one is my high rate of 100%, and that's going to be for the instructor. I'm going to leave that alone. 
And then the next thing I want to do is I want to do the student switches first, and then I want to do the instructor switches because of the way that this is programmed. And I'll explain that in a second. So let's go ahead and do um, a student rate. So the switch for it is no longer just this switch. It's going to be the logical switch. So I'll go over here, go over to logic switches, and then let's do student low rate. I think that's fine. And let's make the low rate really low so we can see it. Probably won't be this low for actual usage, but let's make it 30% so we can see a big, a big jump. Let's add a new weight. And same thing, let's do the logic switch for the student mid rate. There it is. And let's make this uh, 45% just to make it kind of low. Let's add a new one for the student. And let's make this a student high rate, logic switch, student high rate. And let's make this one, I don't know, 55%. Obviously, you'd probably make it, you know, 70, 80, and 100. But just so we can see a big difference, let's just do that. So right now, if you notice, flip the switch over. Everything is at 100% because that's the default rate if none of these conditions are met. So this, these conditions, which, which are logical switches, are this switch in the down position plus these switches. So because of that, nothing is um, triggering, so it'll go to 100%. But if I flip the switch over here, there's my student rate of low, medium, and high. Instructor's plane. All right, let's go ahead and add the instructor rates. So I'm going to go over here and go over there and let's add these switches. These switches don't have a logical switch. So we got our low rate, our mid rate, and then high rate, right? So I'm going to go low rate. And let's make the low rate for the instructor. We'll make that, say, 75. Add a new weight. Mid, mid rate, we'll make that there. And then we'll make this 85. Now for high rate, I'm just going to do my high rate up here. And so high rate at 100, I think is good. So if you take a look over here, you got your student rates, and then you've got your instructor rates down here, plus the 100%. So the only time that these are active is when I am in the trainer mode switch is set to student. Students playing. And then now these switches are active. Now, the interesting thing is over here, we do have a high and a low rate. I'm sorry, a low rate and a mid rate. So we have a, a low rate, mid rate over here. But since that one, so let's just say low rate. I have a low rate over here and I have a low rate on my student. So right now, the conditions haven't been met for those, so it's choosing SA up. But if I go to the instructor, or if I go to the student side, and I'm in low rate over there, 30%, it'll go to that because that one is on top of the list. So that, even though SA is up, so SA switch is in the up position, it'll go to that one because it is higher in the list. And that's why I put those ones on top. So right now, I'm in low rate for my instructor and low rate for my student. Because I have the switch pressed, it is doing the lower for the student, which is at 30%. Now, if I release this switch, now it goes to that rate over there. So two things matter. Number one is the order in which you put stuff in. The top one will take priority if two of the conditions are met. So when I go to the student mode, students play. My student low rate takes over, even though that switch is bolded, it takes over the actual thing because it is higher on the list. So when two conditions are exactly the same and they're both, they're, they're both being met, it'll always go to the one higher in the list. Instructor's plane. Now, the other one is the 100 without um, a switch assignment. When none of the conditions are met for any of these, then it goes to that point. So I have a low, medium, and high rate for my student. But when this switch is in the instructor mode, then all those are off. SA up and SA mid, it'll take over over there. 
But when I go to SA down, since I didn't assign an SA down, that is pretty much whatever rate is up there. So now I can ch change that rate and make that to whatever I want. So let's just say 100 is good. I'll go back to 100. There it goes. So I hope that makes sense for you. But that's the reason why there are there is a rate and an expo without a switch assignment. So when the other conditions are met, it'll go to that. So that's why I only assigned an up and a mid position for the instructor side, so a low and a mid. But I didn't assign an up because it's already there on the high rate. If I wanted to, I can assign one there for, um, for high rates by doing an SA down, but it's not necessary because of that. Expo works the same way. So let's just say that uh, for the instructor, I only want one Expo. So let's go ahead and put that in the default one without a switch assignment. Let's just say um, for argument, let's just make it 4%. So it's a very low amount of Expo. And then let's add some curves for the student rate. So at student low rate, let's go ahead and go to logic switch. And student low rate, we want an Expo of say, Forty percent, and mid rate we want an expo of forty five percent. I'm just making some arbitrary numbers. Do whichever ones you want, obviously. And for student high rate, logic switch. Expo, 55%, let's just say. These are way too much, especially for those low rates that we have set for the student. But I want to see a big difference. So now, when I go to student mode, Students claim. there's my rates and my expo done for student. And then when I go to instructor, Instructors claim. there's my rate and my expo, which is a very low amount for my instructor. And that's pretty much it. You just duplicate the same thing on your elevator and your rudder, and you have a setup that has student rates over here and has instructor rates over here. Very simple setup, but it's just using logical switches to define the difference between the student and the instructor rates. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, you feel free to leave a comment on this video. Um, I'll be honest, I don't see a lot of... Um, those comments and my notifications. So it might take a while for me to respond. If it is something urgent, go ahead and email me at jose at freesky-rc.com. And I would probably get back to you if, um, if it's something that you need a question on or if you have a question to be answered. So uh, thank you very much, guys, and have a good day.